We arrive on the scene. It took me uh, maybe three seconds to just take a hold of what I was looking at. It was uh, it was something to see. Matter of fact, give me a one along, fire along. Give me a one along. And I asked dispatch to complete the one along, which means to send multiple companies. Hey, yeah, back the bitch up. I call for Hazmat, which is our hazardous materials officer. He comes out on the scene to deal with anything that's classified by DOT as a hazardous material, such as fuel. Oh, Ooh, this is gonna be bad, though. Go away from yes, that. Yes, indeed. That bitch can blow. See if you find a hydrant. Come on, we gotta do something quick. Go on, they got a hydrant on that corner. It's gonna be on that side over there. Some new information real quick. Lady said that this car, they hit a car, a passenger car on the other side, said nobody got out. One side of the street is businesses, the other side is residences. We don't want to see that gas station go up either. And yeah, that's a whole nother set of problems. So you've got life safety factor, you've got explosion potential. Sometimes we got to remember that, you know, this thing is a killer. Give me a deuce and a half. All right. Put a deuce and a half up. Leave it out for right now. 503, the hazmat cab of the truck so far is on fire. Let's hump it. Let's hump it. I mean, I feel helpless, but I mean, what can I do? That thing explodes right now. Do you talking about blocks? Right. Blocks of devastation. Hope the driver of that truck got out. I don't like this at all. Command of 27, back your crew out. It's hot beyond explanation. All right, look. Hayden wants to back it up. Hey, let him, let it go. Y'all got to move on, sir. Come on, Hayden. You're working under the most stressful conditions that I can imagine for us to put on 60 pounds of gear and go face to face with something that has no mind of its own. A little fear might want to creep in, and you got to keep that at at bay and, and, and just do the job. Watch that power line. Back up, back up, back up. I need some help. When our hoses are filled with water, they're heavy like boulders. Yeah, that's right. Back up, back up. It's getting hot. Having been a fireman before, that was the first thought in my mind was we're too close. I told Ty, it's funny, there's a trick that they teach you is to put your thumb up and look at the scene and if you can still see it around your thumb, you're still too close. Dude, we got to back up some more. Right. Come on, move this truck. Dude, that's getting way too big, way too fast. Dude, when you see fire backing up, that's when you know, all right, we need to just back this bitch up a little bit. Just stay safe. What about the foam? You still got plans for that? Nah, it's too much for foam right now. Commander file on the tank then ruptured. We have a lot of fire and flames blowing out of the tank here. You don't have to let it burn for the time being. We don't know how much fuel is inside that tanker. Every truck carries 15 gallons of foam. That's not going to cut it. So we had to call in foam truck that's outfitted with the master stream nozzle that can apply foam way more than we could with a couple of hand lines. Command the 500. Uh, do we have any uh, foam truck or anything we can use? Uh, you're letting this gas tank of fire burn, burn itself out. 
but uh, we're probably going to need it uh, when we get able to get close enough to it. The first moments of a fire are the most dangerous, and it took every ounce of restraint that these guys have to stay back and not get in there and fight that fire. The pylon pickup man be advised. A phone picker truck is responding from engine 10 quarters. 10 quarters. One of the things that all first responders are taught that if you don't protect yourself first, you can't help anybody else. See that tornado, huh? I don't know where nobody's at. We don't know where the alley you could all it was was a mango restaurant up there. Paul, I know it could be ten bodies up there. Bouvier, look, uh, two of the guy's brothers are the driver and he's asking me about him. I'm like, I don't I don't I don't know what to tell him. Tell him right now, we don't have all of that information. Alright, that's fine. They can't find out anything until that fire gets down and we get close. At this time we don't know anything, my man. I know where you at, but I promise, I know it's your family. And we find something out, where we'll come let you know. Amp it up. Down to the operations, we're starting to hit the uh, fire with the bomb. There we go. Now we're putting it out. Whew. You all right? All right, baby. All right, bro. Good job, baby. Once the fire was out, we were able to put our eyes on the victim. Uh, you know, that, that sticks with you for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just need to take a quick look so I can call it in. I can tell you. Point it out. The only thing I can recognize. All right. You have to be pronounced deceased by someone with a medical license, meaning a doctor. We are basically an extension of the, the doctor's hands in the field with what we do. Hey, Doc, it's Dan with New Orleans, Unit 3220. I'm on the scene of a 18-wheeler uh, fuel tanker fire. We do have one confirmed fatality in the cab of this truck. Right now, that's the only patient we're calling for a DNR on that person. We call the physician and tell them what we see and what's going on, and then they ultimately say yes. You know, the time of death is. Time of death, 11.28 PM. Copy, Dr. Nunez. Thank you, Doc. I mean, that guy was probably just starting his day. I mean, there's a lot of refineries down in that part of town. I mean, I think that's really when it hits you. Like, this guy really had no idea what was going on. Like, he had no clue that it was going to end. I, I think that's sad when you think about you know, the families and his, his friends and everything in his life that changes as a result of a tragic accident. It's always good to see them boys walking around when it's over. I know, right? We may not have been able to save the driver of that tanker, but we did what we set out to do, and that was to protect our neighborhood. We're tasked with the duty of holding that night watch, keeping everyone safe. And amidst all that chaos, all that craziness, and all that noise, and we got the job done. A male got on the phone with EMS and stated that the child was playing and had a fall and possibly hit his head. Caller states he picked the male up and brought him inside. He is awake and breathing. OK. It should be this one. Oh, 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 dog. Oh, little puppy. Little puppy is right following his owner. Almost got hit. Where'd it go? Where'd the dog go? Um, I don't see the dog. Oh, it's over there. OK. But this little kid, hold on, because the kid just crossed the street. Yeah. It's going to be this end house on the corner. Two on two. Hey. You OK? Yeah. Does anything hurt? What's up, guys? Your head right there in the front. Friends and family members said he was out playing football. He fell, and that they're not sure what he struck his head on, but that he struck his head. You want us to take him up to the hospital, my baby? Yeah, mama. Um, that's his brother. All right, are you coming oh, with on, us? Man. OK. His brother, he just got back from college. This was his first time watching him. So he definitely was very, very concerned. All right, Lorenzo, put some stickers on you, OK? But you're not even going to feel the stickers, OK, ma'am? I'm not going to get the door. OK. 
Here, baby. Hold this. See if you're gonna throw up. Keep your arm down. Keep this arm down for me, Lorenzo. During this time, he starts throwing up, which changes the call because somebody had hit their head and lost consciousness is one thing, but now that he's throwing up, it kind of takes it to a little higher level, a little more urgency involved in the call. All right. No, you think that was it? Yeah. OK. So now I'm going to start an IV in case he does continue to vomit. Then I can give him medication to help calm his nausea and vomiting. Is he allergic to anything, though? I don't think so, no. Okay. Have you ever had an IV before, baby? Yeah. OK, so you know what it's going to feel like, huh? Real quick pinch, OK? Nice little vein. Hey. Lorenzo, how old are you, bud? Look at me. Talk you ready? Me. How old are you? 10. Ten? Okay. Good size for 10, bud. You are such a little man. I'm telling you, man, you're the champ. <laughs> you did better Damn. than most adults do. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Where you hit it, huh? Right here? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. OK. I mean, well, you can get back here so you can watch him. That's OK. Here, you want to lean back some? Yeah? Just let me know if you feel like you're going to throw up again. Okay. Yeah. That's an old wives' tale. OK? <laughs> If he wanted to take a nap, he could absolutely take a nap. The things you need to be concerned about are if the person starts talking and not making any sense, if they're confused, if they get combative. Other than that, keep him comfortable. Bring him on up to the hospital, get checked out. He's a little trooper, I can tell you that. Rescue 5, we have a nine-year-old boy with respiratory issues and possible asthma attack. Please acknowledge. Is it difficulty breathing with a history of asthma? We're not 100% sure if it is an asthma attack or what. The Jayhawk. Oh, yeah, the Jayhawk, where they have color TV and they got free adult movies. I'm taking my wife there for our anniversary. Oh, wow. It's special. I just wanted her to feel like all the amenities were already broken in. They'll definitely be broken in along with their car. Oh. Now we're talking. Oh, there, right there. Uh, he does not look good. As we arrive on scene, I can see a nine-year-old boy. He's coughing uncontrollably. As a father, it's tough to go to calls involving kids. Um, he had some allergy medicine. How long now? Yeah, even through all that cough. Two, Two hours. Two and a half hours now. <laughs> Non-stop. <laughs> you take a prednisone, too, they said. It's supposed to be to stop this. But when we give it to him, it makes, it, it, like makes it work. Prednisone is a steroid that helps to treat the inflammation associated with asthma. Right now, we're not really sure why his condition worsened after taking prednisone. Let's get him on a stretcher, guys. Hey, Julie, are you riding with us? I am, yeah. Okay. Put some seatbelts on you, OK? Atta boy. You want IV? Yeah. What's your arm, buddy? All right, buddy, I got to poke your arm real fast, OK? Oh, no. No, no. It's like a little pin break. No! No! Just don't look. No! 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 It's really important to have a steady hand and also be confident in your IV site. You want to get this over as fast as possible to make this as painless and quick for this little kid. It's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. What's up, buddy? Needles out. Listen to her. All right, everybody out, let's go. When his grandmother couldn't calm him down, I had to clear the truck and just get one-on-one -on -one with him. So he had some time to just relax and calm down. Try to control your breathing in through your nose, like you're smelling the roses, and then blow out the candles. Smell the roses, blow out the candles. And that's all I want you to think about right now, OK? Try to calm your thoughts and just relax. Now listen, all we're going to do now is just take a ride, OK? You need to be brave. You need to be strong. All right, man, you ain't got nothing to worry about, Bubba. Me and him, we got you, all right? Just all right, a car ride, OK? Just a car ride. That's it. You're all done. No more poking, no more prodding. Feeling better? Atta boy. How'd you stop coughing? We got it all under control. We're going to smell the roses and blow out the candles. Literally cough nonstop, no break. 
for two, two and a half, two, two and a half hours. It's a long time. Does he have anything going on in his life right now, stress-wise? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stress. Yeah. <laughs> That can trigger it too, Mom. Yeah. You got him nice and calm. His breathing's improved. He's setting at 100%. You're a big guy, man. All right? You did good, buddy. You did good. You get to ride in style tonight. There's a guy that I used to work with on the job here. Yeah. I heard him use that term, smell the roses, blow out the candles. Not only did it work, but it worked in, like, record time. You know? <laughs> It was like almost instant. I think with kids, I think especially as patients, they need to know that they can trust us. And he started to do it. The rest of the ride there, he was chill, man. You're trying to describe 51-year-old male. Possibly has intoxicated. Sitting on the sidewalk because he's unconscious. White male wearing a blue and gray shirt and black pants. Mm -hmm. 39 gonna be on that side. Let's be in front of the Astor Crown Plaza. She can't be hard to find a man passed out on the ground. We received a call for a man down on Canal Street vomiting. One in a million. You know what's funny? A lot of things go to our head because it's always different. Just to be a man from sleeping to a man that's not breathing. So you, we really don't know what to expect until we pull up. We're in the air. I think he's right here. Hello. How are y'all? Could be better. Could be better, huh? What's going on? Um, I had too much to drink. Uh-oh. Who is this to you, baby? I'm Mike. What's his name? Michael. Mr. Hey, Mr. Michael. How you feel? Are you all right? Hey, just gave us a hey look, up. me, he's going to get on one side, and I'm going to get on the other. We're going to use your legs and get you on this stretcher, right, brother? Titus and I are dispatched to a man down on Canal Street that's vomiting. So there's a strong smell of alcohol, and it just looks like he's had a little too much to drink. On three, Mike. One, two, three. Uh, there we go, brother. But uh, he's pleasant. We kind of want to keep it that way, so we try to form a, a rapport with him and kind of make friends for the moment. But we still want to assess him for injury before we move him and get him to the truck and make sure that there's nothing else going on. You good? You hurting anywhere, bud? Nah, just had a little too much. You about to throw it right now? We are gonna be with you, but you gotta let us know before you go, all right? Up, oh, up, oh, oh. hold up. He vomits pretty violently. I mean, it's like something off of the Exorcist movie. It's projectile, he gets some distance on it. So we immediately drop the stretcher. He's leaning off the side of the stretcher. We lower the stretcher where he doesn't flip the stretcher over and cause himself further injury. Got it? I'm a paramedic. I see vomit all the time. If I get it on me this time, it won't be the first or last time. So it's something I'm kind of used to at this point. We're going to give you some medicine to help you with that nausea, right, brother? Let me sit this off for one moment. We're going to check y'all. Are you hurting anywhere? No, just nausea? Let us know. You get me? I don't think so. All right, let me get you. Almost got me, Mr. Mike. My man good at that, look. This is something they don't teach you in, in school. If you were a patient that's been drinking a little bit too much, They'll talk to you, then they give you that stare. And my man locked eyes with me, and we got that stare. I just know I had to, you know, step two feet to the side. How you feel since you threw up? I feel like crap. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to give you some fluids, too, all right? My man threw everything up. I just seen the red beans, the, the shrimp, the, the etouffee. What you been drinking, man? You got them hurricanes? Nah, Sambuca I got you. Sambuca got you. That Sambuca got you. Well, you know what? You got me, man. I don't think I ever had Bambuca. I don't think I ever had oh, that either. Oh, my God, it's awful. Mike, that's your drink? I, I don't know if I want it now. My uh. man had a good time on Canal Street, but a little bit too much Sambuca. Y'all ready? Yeah, we ready. He got me, but I know he didn't try to do it on purpose, so that goes a long way, too. Let's take a wipe and wipe it off. I'm a paramedic. That's what we do. We going to the hospital, Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike. Yeah. He said he can't remember what happened. Mr. Zambuca himself. <laughs> what the <laughs> f You know Zambuca? <laughs> oh, Zambuca. What the f you tell him? <laughs> I didn't say anything. That, that was your bartender. He was the one feeding you the drinks. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't remember me? You don't remember him? Yeah. It's not a complete New Orleans trip until you get to visit the ER, man. Good evening, I'm Kim Holden. 
And I'm Nancy Parker. Police say the fire trapped the driver of the 18-wheeler and he died. The woman who police say was driving the wrong way when she crashed into the truck is now under arrest. Be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're going to bleed to death. Grab the knife. Grab the knife. They're not dead. I can work with that.